What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. Glad to have you here today. Paul with Aggressively Average Anglers here to talk to you about some winter kayak safety tips. I'm gonna give you a couple tips today about how to stay safe in the winter and really the fall. The fall more than anything else for you in the north, the winter for you guys down in the south. Now there are some basic tips, but I'm gonna give you a couple rules of thumb to help keep you safe to know when it's safe to go out and when you need to bring what kind of gear. And look, as kayak anglers, we always know that there's an element of danger, right? You, the opportunity to flip over presents itself every single time you get out on the water. And so there's a couple of things that you always have to have with you, no matter what. Number one is a PFD. Here's my kayak setup right here. And as you can see, first thing I got in here, first thing I packed was the PFD. It's underneath everything else. That means it went in first. And that is because it is the most important piece of safety equipment that you can have in your kayak, period. The end. A lot of times when people roll over, they find that they there's an opportunity for you to bash your head, right? That could be on rocks. Uh, that could just be getting stunned as you get rolled, you know, as you get rolled in your kayak. When that happens, having the PFD is the thing that's going to potentially save your life. So it's extremely important. Flotation is great. So if you're hurt in any way, you can still float. Now with my PFD, there's a couple things I have in here that I wanna point out other than just the PFD itself. One thing I gotta point out here is a knife. Now you don't have to have this knife. This is an NRS knife. This is really for like river floats and stuff like that. Uh, but having a knife is actually a very important safety tool, especially when you're fishing. You get line wrapped around you. You can get bow lines that are, uh, especially in current, I think that's where it's the most important to have. But you know, you get bow lines wrapped around things you don't want them to get wrapped around. You get fishing line wrapped up or you don't get it, wanna get it wrapped up and that can cause a problem. Problem, a knife could be a thing that would save you. Another thing that I have in here that everyone should have, but not everyone brings, is a whistle. A loud whistle. <whistles> Holy crap. Thing is loud. Jeff's over there. I watched him flinch. Um, a whistle is incredibly important. You want to have it easy access. You want to have it as out as possible in a place where it's not going to get lost. Because realistically, again, uh, you can't be loud enough. And when you're on the river, especially, um, being able to call for help could be the thing that saves your life. In cold water, on the lake, it could be the thing that brings a boater over. So if you, let's say you get flipped and you can't self, uh, self arrest yourself, or let's say you get flipped in cold water and you can't uh, get back into your vessel on your own power, uh, for whatever reason, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're hurt, maybe your arms or legs are hurt and you're not able to do what you're normally able to do, a whistle could be the thing that brings a boater or a homeowner out to you and again, saves your life, gets you to the hospital, gets you in a warm truck, gets you indoors, whatever it happens to be, that could be the thing that saves you. So PFD and whistle, non-negotiable, must have. Now the real danger when you're in the fall and the winter time is hypothermia. Now hypothermia is a lot closer than you think when it comes to water temperatures. So anything below 70 degrees is where you're starting to see a really, uh, a real risk of getting hypothermia when you go in the water. 70 degrees, that doesn't sound that cold, does it? 70 degrees, when it's 70 outside and air temps, you're like, dang, that's a pretty nice day. But your body, but your body sits at a temperature of 98.6 degrees. That means 70 degrees is almost 30 degrees lower than that, lower than your body. That's not where your body wants to be. And when your body temperature starts falling, that's when you're running into trouble. Sorry, I'm using the, trying to block the wind here with this tree. So that's when you're gonna start getting into trouble. Hypothermia can set in when the water temp is 70 degrees or below in less than three minutes. That is super fast. And when hypothermia sets in, that means you're losing control of your extremities and you don't have the ability to take care of yourself. And ultimately, you're in real danger. One of the first tips I'm gonna give you for staying safe is knowing when you're actually at risk. We already talked about water under 70 degrees. There's a rule called the 120 rule, 120. That's 120. When the combination of the air temp and the water temp is below 120, that means you're at risk. That means there's an element of danger and you need to at least be mindful of it or at least protect yourself. So for example, 60 degree air temp, 60 degree water temp, element of danger. The one thing I will add as a caveat, now that I've used that example, is anytime the water is 60 degrees or lower, that's an extreme risk. You are at an extreme risk. If you flip over in a kayak in 60 degree water, regardless of the air temp, you're in trouble. So the 120 rule, combination of air temp and water temp equaling less than 120, there's a severe risk for you. The caveat, the asterisk on that is, if the water temp is under 60 degrees, you just gotta know that there's an, a very real element of risk for you. Now, when you really start doing the math, I think that's actually gonna surprise some people. So like, I'm here today on the lake, air temp right now is like 65 degrees, the water's only about 70 degrees, which means I'm only 10 or 11 degrees away from that 120 rule. 
I mean, it's like, it's the end of September. There, I mean, there is a really real risk. And when it's cold, that's what's gonna happen. So just that 120, 120 roll helps set the table for what your day is gonna be like and the, the type of mentality you're gonna attack when you go on the water. So let's talk about how you protect yourself. First thing is trying to stay dry. Uh, when you're launching kayaks, you don't always have the luxury of staying dry. So uh, getting some knee-high neoprene or rubber boots. Rubber is going to beat neoprene every single time, but it's just not as comfortable. A lot of folks are going to end up with a neoprene. But neoprene is great because it's going to keep you almost as dry as rubber, uh, but it also has a lot better insulating properties. So you're going to stay nice and warm. So get yourself some knee-high boots for when you're launching. Having wet feet at the start of your journey is going to ruin your entire day when the water is like 65 or 70 degrees. It just is going to. So get some knee-high rubber boots. Also, <clears throat> there's a lot of different kind of gloves that are out there. Uh, I've got the three that I like to use the most. Um, one of them is, the lightest is a merino wool uh, fingerless glove. I love these, but hooks do get caught in them. Uh, this is what I use for ice fishing more often than not. It's another wool glove. These are actually really expensive, but they have the flip top mitten which is great mittens are warmer than gloves period the end so when you have a little bit of both that's really nice and the, the thumb opens up which is pretty dope so you can really tinker with your lures and when it's extremely cold <clears throat> i use a neoprene glove a little bit harder for hooks to just like generally get into these but it still does happen these are really great though this is a, a nice glove for when you know you're going to be handling fish and water and if you're catching fish you're probably touching some water so something to think about there now you notice i said wool a couple of different times that is my next point is when it comes to socks, uh, when it comes to like your long johns, if you're wearing those, when it comes to undershirts or anything, uh, any of anything that's next to skin, get yourself some wool. It doesn't have to be merino wool, but get yourself like 100% wool. Do not wear a cotton or a polyester blend. Why do I say that? Wool retains its ability to insulate even when it's wet. So even when you have cold water against you, if you start moving around, your body's going to retain more of that heat because the the Jeff's catching some fish. He's having a great day. I'm just standing here filming. This is lame. But that wool is going to, uh, as your body creates heat or begins to create heat, it's going to re-insulate you. So if your feet get wet, if your hands get wet, or even if your body gets wet, uh, that wool is going to help you out. Versus cotton or poly blends, they are not going to do that for you. They're great when they're dry. They're wonderful. But the second they get wet, they lose all of their um, insulating properties. So wool it's worth the extra couple bucks, I'm telling you right now. And lastly, I'll say this, if you're going on the river, this is one where I know a lot of times folks are just kind of disregard the advice of tell someone where you're going or have a partner with you. Same thing with the lake. I mean, people are just like, yeah, I don't need that. Nothing's gonna happen. Mentally, plan as though you're going to flip, especially when you're fishing in the fall or the winter time. The element of danger is so high you always plan as though you're going to fall, not that you're not as though you're not going to fall. So make sure you're telling someone where you are, make sure you have a partner with you, make sure you have your whistle, right? Those are things that are going to potentially save your life because again, the element of danger is so close to you uh, when the water's that cold. Lastly, and a lot, no one does this. I mean, I virtually, I could count on one hand the number of people I know that have done this, but when you first get your kayak, or maybe it's like, uh, you know, in the summertime, empty out your kayak completely. Empty out your kayak completely. Put a Jeff in there. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. kidding. You can fit them, probably. <laughs> empty, out your, empty out your kayak, flip it over while you're in it. Get, get, get used to that feeling, and then practice getting into your kayak. I think the easiest way to get it back into a kayak is from the front. Do not try and do it from the side. But when you're flipping your kayak, you have to flip it over while you're in the water. Practice flipping it over. That's the thing that I think a lot of people forget about. Getting back into the kayak really isn't the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge is flipping it back over. Watch some YouTube videos. Watch how it's done. Do it right now. I'm not gonna do it right now because the water is probably 70 degrees. So it's 68.9. It's 68.9. We are only 8.9 degrees away from the uh, from yes, the danger no. zone. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, practice getting back into your kayak. Just understand the feeling. Know what it's like and just do it. I know that sounds like extreme, but I think what's extreme is getting into water that's too cold for you to survive in and thinking that it's gonna be okay when you fall in. That to me is extreme. So look, I know I'm like safety Sally right now, but I'm fine doing it. Uh, we're out here to fish, we're out here to have fun. We're not out here to put ourselves in danger and not be able to go fishing again. So if you wanna catch that big that you didn't catch today, tomorrow, you gotta stay safe today. I love that. You have to be alive. You gotta be alive to catch fish. So let's keep doing that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thanks for staying safe on the water so you can go catch more fish and do more fun things. We'll see you on the next video. Hope you have a great day. Later.